Let's bring into the conversation now Democratic Congressman Ruben Gallego of Arizona. He serves on the House Armed Services Committee and is a veteran of the war in Iraq. Congressman, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Um, your reaction when you heard the news yesterday uh, from President Biden that Al Zawahiri had been killed, uh, and as we were discussing this morning, just the effort that led up to that day that was years in the making. I was extremely happy to hear it. Um, I spent uh, uh, about seven months fighting uh, in Al-Anbar uh, Al -Anbar against uh, Al-Qaeda and their allies. And to, to see one of those leaders go down, uh, you know, felt good, uh, felt like justice had been served for people that uh, were hurt on 9-11 and for uh, people around the world. And so this is a good start. Uh, it was a very difficult uh, mission. Uh, I'm glad the president uh, decided to go forward with it. Uh, it also is a great credit to our national security uh, uh, you know, national security apparatus, as well as the CIA, who have worked hard uh, to create a mission that would minimize collateral damage, something that's extremely important nowadays. So all around, I think this is a great uh, victory for the United States. Obviously, this does not end al-Qaeda, but certainly disrupts al-Qaeda. We've heard, Congressman, a couple of views of um, this victory, objectively, uh, for the United States and for the world. One is that this proves, according to the Biden administration, that the United States can conduct its business over the horizon, doesn't need troops on the ground. The other side of it, not just from Republicans, but we've heard from some of our guests this morning as well, is that, well, the fact that the Taliban was harboring this guy in plain sight in a fancy neighborhood of Kabul and that he was stepping out into his balcony and living pretty openly shows us that this agreement we have with the Taliban just doesn't work. What's your view of it? Look, I think the agreement doesn't work. And we're still waiting for a lot of our former uh, contractors and friends uh, to be let out of the country. Uh, they have a right to come to the United States to travel to other countries. The Taliban have not been uh, you know, abiding by that agreement. At the same time, we have to work with what we have. Uh, we're not going to go back into Afghanistan. We cannot occupy a country again. The American public will not stand for it, nor do we know that it will be in our best interest, considering what we're dealing with in Russia and China right now. But we have to continue pulling the resources that we are uh, currently uh, doing, which is focusing on oil horizon capabilities, increasing our intelligence capability on the ground with whatever sources we can get. And we know that there are some sources involved there. Uh, but, you know, you, trusting the Taliban is not, is not going to be the answer. Putting the Taliban in check, I think, is the best thing we can do. And we have to continue doing that. Congressman, uh, you're talking about serving in El Anwar province. Of course, we are, we're deeply grateful uh, for your service to the United States of America in uniform. You have a lot of Friends, I know, uh, former colleagues that served in Iraq, also served in Afghanistan. And because of it, uh, they are suffering physical maladies. It happens in every war. Uh, and it's the United States' responsibility, it's Congress's responsibility to step up and take care of those vets who gave their all, who risked their lives, who left their families, who endured sacrifices that 99% of us can't even begin to imagine. I'm wondering. Uh, what do you say to those vets uh, who are waiting uh, for health care that they desperately need uh, that, that are being held up right now in Washington, D.C. because of politics? Quite, uh, I mean, let's let's just be specific about it because of Republicans in the United States Senate. Well, this is unfortunately very personal for me. I, I live next to a burn pit for about a month and. Um, you know, so far I've been very lucky, but I'm always worried every time I go to a doctor that I am just a ticking time bomb. And I have served with some of my brothers that have, at young ages, uh, you know, had cancers that you know young men should not have. Uh, and I think it's entirely because of uh, that. Uh, so I'll, I'll tell you from my personal feeling, I feel betrayed. Even though I am in politics, I guess I should not have been surprised, but I always thought at least at a minimum, uh, you know, cynical moves like this would, would, would not stop you know, good services to go into veterans, especially when we were just at the 99, uh, at the yard line, uh, one yard line, ready to go home. And um, it hurts, you know. Uh, you know, we always say they're, they're so quick to send us to war, but they're not as quick to, to give us the services we need. You know, uh, Senator Toomey, and I'm sure a lot of other public colleagues weren't complaining about <clears throat> the tax cuts they gave while we were all at war. Uh, they weren't yeah. worried about the fiscal budget. But now that we need these services, and we're going to need these services for a long time, now they care about the budget, right? So what you're so telling me and what you're telling every veteran is you care more about the mighty dollar than you do about our lives. 
Yeah. What we're talking about here is uh, the Republicans blocking this health care bill that provides potentially life-saving health benefits for veterans exposed to toxic burn pits, like the congressman in Iraq and Afghanistan. It had initially passed the Senate by a wide margin, then passed the House, which had to make a minor tweak to its language. Twenty-five Republicans then voted against the bill. They had previously voted for blocking it from final passage. Earlier this morning, we asked the chair of the Veterans Affairs Committee, Democratic Senator John Tester of Montana, whether there were any changes made to the bill by the House that would have prompted the Senate Republicans to now oppose it. Take a listen. There was one sentence taken out of the bill that uh, said that VA uh, could uh, buy out uh, provider, provider contracts. That's it. That's the only change. One sentence. And the only reason that was done is because uh, it raised revenue, and so we had to strip it out. Uh, the bottom line is this is exactly, exactly the same bill that we voted on on June 16th and passed with 84 votes. And I've got to tell you, I, I cannot figure out why we passed this bill gave the benefits the folks thought they had them and now mm -hmm. we've taken it away you know two three weeks later it doesn't make any sense to me i mean i yeah you have to then think is it politics is it that they're mad about something else but these are our veterans well look the senator is is a gentleman i'm sure does not want to call out some of his, his colleagues but it is entirely a political play it was a um, reaction uh, a childish reaction because republicans were mad that the CHIPS Act passed and that there was going to be a reconciliation bill that was going to pass by Schumer and Manchin. And so they basically struck at the first thing they could that was available, and veterans were the consequence of that. So you have these Republican senators who wrap themselves around the flags, who will show up at our American Legion halls, our VFW halls, who will say, you know, they're, they're friends of veterans. Uh, and then they basically used us as a cheap political boy to strike back uh, at Democrats. Uh, we should not have been collateral damage to this, uh, but it just shows you how the general attitude is when it comes to how veterans are treated uh, most of the time, and especially when it comes yeah. to how we're treated by Republicans when it comes to, you know, us versus money. All right. Democratic Congressman Ruben Gallego of Arizona, thank you very much for being on the show this morning. We appreciate it.